Alrighty, well, morning everybody, and it's cast time once again. And, um, this time around, um, I've done this before. Uh, this is gonna be driving down, uh, Hennepin Avenue in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, just, I actually, um, uh, had a whole bunch of visuals and all that other stuff all set up and everything. Um, took one look at it, and I just said, fuck it. So, so, the majority of this video... It's just going to be me talking. Like, hardly any visuals at all. Um, basically, I'm going to try to keep those to an absolute bare minimum. And plus, um, as I was putting this together, the things that I was want, for the things that I wanted to talk about, I needed to be able to focus. I got to be able to focus on uh, what I want to say. I don't want to be, I don't want to end up being in two places at once. Like, because... Like I've said yesterday, and like I've said from time to time, um, this isn't, I don't, most of this is improvised. Like, I'll, the, the visuals and whatnot, they're all, I'll set those up, but then aside from that, um, again, I'm just ad-libbing everything. So, but, and which, which again, I'm, basically when doing these, I'm, Try, I have to be in two places at once. I gotta talk, but I also gotta... I gotta put up the right thing at the right time as well. The right element. So, so this time around, I'm just gonna be doing a drive down Hennepin Avenue, and I'm just I'm gonna try to spend the majority of my, my, my time just talking. And, um, I was all... Originally, I was actually gonna... I wanted to, I wanted to get a, do a video of a tour through the, uh, Pinball Hall of Fame in Las Vegas. But yeah, that would have been way too distracting. There's no way in hell I'd be able to focus. So. But. Oh, and um, to those that have never seen any of my other cast videos, yes, I've done this kind of thing from time to time. From uh, driving in the city to walking in the country. So. It just, wherever the mood takes me. Okay, so to start with, um, just like I do every more or every time I wake up, I get, get a pinball stream going, and this time around, it actually went pretty good. I think, um, I think with FX3, I think um, on the tourneys, I placed like, I placed first in like one or two of them, and I was pretty solid in all the others. Oh, and a pinball arcade, uh, just like has been going on the past few days, it's been freaking awesome. Um, just like, again, just like the other past two days, um, I actually did better on pinball arcade than I did on FX3. More often than not, or I should say 90% of the time, it's actually the other way around. Usually I do, I do great on FX3, but utter ass on arcade. So, but nope. Not this time. Um, I think I, I got, I think I got pretty close to beating one of my, uh, beating one of my old high scores. But um, I think, I think I got, I broke in the top five high scores, in like one or two other tables I played. But all the rest of the time, solid performer, like just basically very fundamentally sound. Like wasn't, wasn't really flubbing the flippers too much or anything like that. You know, it wasn't, um, how can I put this? Um, yeah, I was, I was, you know, I was missing shots, just like anybody else would, but I was, um, I was able to bounce back and recover quickly afterwards, so. But, yeah, um, then, um, Zachariah, I did better today. Than I did yesterday, but not really by much. I think it was um. I'm trying to think. I think I did great on a, or not great, but I did. Pre I performed pretty solidly on one or two tables. Um, not that great on all the others, but like I said, it a better a better day today than it was yesterday. So whereas, whereas yesterday and Zachariah, I was just oh got utterly ass, but. 
Also, like um yesterday, um I was on the I was on the tail end of my stream anyway, so I wasn't gonna be on that long. Um, but also towards the end of it, um this new uh, new visitor came on, a new guy, never seen him before, but he's he was actually a pretty cool guy. Uh, I think like me, he he's been he's been playing pinball for years, but he ended up really pissing me off. Like when I started playing Zachariah, it's the whole. Oh, these tables are not real. They're fake. You know, it just... Which, uh, you know, actually... No. No. I mean... I mean, just like, you know, just like FX3. You know, some of the tables on there are real. You know, um, on FX3, it's all the Williams and Valley tables. They do exist in real life. Um, Zachariah, same thing. Mainly the... The tables from the 70s and 80s are real. It, I think he might have said that too because Zachariah is a company that's based in Italy. Not here in the United States. So I'm guessing that's why he thought they were all fake. Um, but, you know, so naturally, you know, you're not going to... You're not going to be a whole lot of uh, table... Not a whole lot of Zachariah tables you're going to see here in the United States. I mean, again... It's based in Italy, so that's where at least 90% of all the tables are going to be. So, but I, I mean, kind of pissed me off. It just, he basically hit a canker sore. It really irks me when people say that. Um, I also, you know, I've, al I've also heard the same thing before. Uh, some people talking about PPX, Visual Pinball X. You know, it's just... Oh God! Pinball Arcade is horrible. Oh, FX3 is a joke. And Zachariah, oh, it's okay. You know, and that kind of shit. You know, BPX is great. Now, I, now it does have. And to be fair, oh, let me uh, rewind back a little bit. Um, he did come back. That other guy, he did come back a little bit later. He can't, you know. And we chatted up a little more. But again, by that time, it was time for me to go. You know, but again, it just, oh, it pisses me off when people say that. You know, I mean, I think if you like, if you like pinball, I mean, to me, if you're truly passionate about pinball, you should be liking it in all its forms. And you shouldn't be hating one thing over another. So, but, um, going back to BPX, um, I actually did give it a chance and... Theoretically, potentially, yeah, it, you're. I'm like, I'd be like a kid in a candy store at that place. But again, um, I actually, uh, I managed to download maybe a couple tables, but they had massive issues, and there was no clear, easy way for me to resolve them, which is a bit, which is a big problem. But otherwise, all other tables that I tried, I couldn't get them going. Why? No ROM chip or. I was about to say chips. Um, no ROMs available. I had to get those elsewhere. You know, you, I mean, say what you want. Um, oh, and um, let me rewind back even more. Those that have seen my, those that have checked out my other cast, I'm pretty much going to be repeating myself here. But for what I'm wanting to talk about, it does bear repeating. Anyway, you know, I mean, say what you want about the bad quality of Steam. Um, you know, Pinball Arcade FX3 and whatnot, but at least you can play them right out of the box. You can download, install them, and play them. You know, I don't have to rob Peter to pay Paul, you know, to get the ROMs I need, which should have already been in the, in the folders and whatnot to begin with. So, so like, but like I said, I gave it a chance, but I got to be able to play the shit immediately, and they have to work right immediately, too. I shouldn't have to be going on Google trying to figure out what's wrong with such and such table. So, but even, but even then, for someone to come up and tell me that, oh, 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 these tables are horrible. BPX, however, it's, ah, uh, you know. So again, so again, no hatred towards this guy or anything, but he just, he just kind of hit a canker sore. Um, and also back when I'm, and back when I was playing fighting games too, I, I would hear, 
I'd kind of hear the same crap from time to time. Um, all hail Fight Cade, you know? Um, I think it was, uh, Street Fighter, like 20 or 30th Anniversary Edition. I got that on Steam. Uh, I was playing that, and I think I had, on at least one or two occasions, I've had people come on there and tell me, Oh, Street Fighter 30th, this is awful. Fight Cade is the best. You know, and, and yeah, and to be and to be fair though, on that, yeah, they're correct, cause, um, the Steam version, Street Fighter 30th Anniversary, yeah, not that great. Uh, mainly because it's got massive sound issues. God, sound one guy, they got it all, it is, it sounded all distorted and stuff. So yeah, no. So I totally agree with him on that. But then again, when I tried launching Fight Kid. I had the same problem with, um, whoop. I had the same problem with VPX, except worse. None of the games were working. All of them required me to have to get the ROMs and all the folders and files and whatnot that I needed elsewhere. They weren't, you know, they weren't included in the, in the download. So, so, yeah. You know, so it just, and once again, say what you know, say what you want about the ass quality of the fighting games I was playing. At least I could play them. You know, I didn't have to go jumping through hoops in order to get the stuff to work. One thing I, this is one thing I don't miss about downtown: the constant stop and go. Green light, then very next block, red light, and then rinse and repeat. Back when I lived in Tulsa, this is what I had to go through. Like, what up? For a brief period of time when I worked at the Tulsa Convention Center, like downtown, that was a constant. You know? You know, and. Something else I was wanting to say too, I totally forgot. Oh well, you know what? I mean, it's in, and as far as I go, I mean, hell. I mean, I'll even, I'll even play Space Cadet. I've, I've streamed it before. Um, when FX3 and Arcade were on the fritz, like when they kept crashing, just, you know, fired up some Space Cadet and played it. So. So I'm not above playing those kind of games, and I guess it's kind of a kind of a fighting game equivalent. Um, for again, for those that have never seen any of my other cast videos before, um, there was a phase that for a while, I probably say for a few years, I was playing fighting games. Um, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a drink of some Arizona green tea here. Hold on. But one of my big, and once again, um, those that have seen my other cast videos, I'm probably going to be repeating myself, but again, um, for what I'm, for the message I'm trying to get across, it does bear repeating. Um, one thing, one, and it's pretty much not going to be a big secret, it's no secret, uh, pro what, what really got me into fighting games, at least at first, was Broly Legs. I saw a documentary on this guy, in you know, and he's a tournament player. So I saw this, and I'm like, okay, there is no excuse for me to not at least try him out. Because, like a lot of other people, and um, pinball is like this too. I, I'm seeing a parallel between pinball and fighting games. A lot of people out there are like, oh, I don't play pinball. Oh, God, I hate pinball. Oh, that, that shit is just too hard, man. I, it's like... It's like I don't. It's like the ball drains almost immediately after I plunge. You know that kind of thing. I was kind of the same way too, like a lot of other people about fighting games. Oh, I can't stand fighting games, man. They're they're too damn mad, too damn hard, man. It's like all the motion inputs and stuff. I don't know how those uh, those evil tournament players do it. You know that kind of thing. So, so again, once I, 
I mean, once I saw the documentary on Broly Lakes, no excuses. So, that, I pretty much embarked on my fighting game journey. But, once again, to kind of reiterate, I kind of, more and more, I was seeing a parallel between fighting games and pinball. So, but, um, another person that, another person that got me into fighting games, or at some point way later on, this is actually recent, was, uh, was a guy named Wooly. Wooly and, um, I guess a whole bunch of his best friends from college. But yeah, they started up a YouTube channel called, uh, Super Best Friends Play. But yeah, they were kind of like, they were kind of like me. Like, they play damn near any fighting game. Like, from the, from the best, from the best fighting games on Fisticuffs, Fisticuffs to the, some of the most god-awful ass games on, uh, Saturday Night Scrub Lords. They played them all. So, so yeah, I, if I'd have known, I mean, if I'd have known about him back in like the 2010s, yeah, I'd, I'd have been playing fighting games back then too. You know, so, so again, and sorry to sound like a broken record, but I see a parallel between the two. <laughs> it just kind of occurred to me. I wasn't expecting to use any visuals at all, except the bare minimum, but somehow, but somehow I made it work. I might act, now that I think about it, I might actually do this more often. Oh, buddy, you're about, oh. oh, I hate it when people drive like this. Man, I thought he was gonna rear end that guy. But no, I but but yeah, kind of a kinda of off topic, but I freaking hate it when people drive like this. Like they It's like they get it's like it looks like they're about to slam into somebody and all of a sudden they just you know stop they stop on a dime. I've seen people I've seen people do this at like stoplights. Like uh I'll get the green light, start going across the intersection, and then I'll see some asshole just come careening, careening, you know, careening uh, across the other, across the other road. I'm thinking I'm going to get T-boned or something, but no. It just, you know, stops on a dime right in front of the red light. I freaking hate it when people do that. So, but anyway, um, I guess one other thing I did, or what, it's what I'm current, it's what I'm currently doing now, just watching some more rugby, Ireland against New Zealand. And it just, I'm feeling really bad for the referee in this. Because he's, he's getting, he's basically getting heckled from players on both sides. So it's really making it hard for him to do his job. And, um, and even the ref, I mean, even the referee was saying the same thing too. You know, please let me, you know, please let me do my job. You know, but you got all these other people trying to do it for him. I guess that's, I guess that's kind of relatable to some extent. I mean, you know, the job I got, Walmart overnights, but I work part time now. But I do come in earlier, like while the store's still open, and yeah, every you know, every so often, I get customers trying to, you know, trying to tell me what my job is, or try to tell me how to do my job, you know, that kind of thing. See, it's it's kind of dis, it's kind of disrespectful when you know when customers do that. You know, you know, ask your question, ask your question, but you also need to be willing to take no for an answer too. I mean, you know, but when, when a customer asks, is there any more of this in the back? I go on the back and check and I come back out. No, ma'am, we're totally out. Oh, okay, well, Thanks. And then five minutes later, I get another employee or, or hell, even a manager. Hey, Joe, is there more? Is there any more of this in the back? That pisses me off to no end when customers do that. You know, it's like I'm being second-guessed. Because what, for those that don't know what happened, 
is uh, whatever a customer does is, you know, when you tell a customer or when you when you don't tell a customer what they want to hear, they'll go to another department and ask, or they'll go up to a cashier and ask the same question. And those people are gonna come to me because I work in that department. So yeah, it, like I said, it's very disrespectful when they oh I'm hey 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 hey, hey whoa, whoa 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 whoa. I recognize this bridge. Grain belt beer. And they must have about remodeled this bridge recently. It used to be kind of a this used to be one big metal grill. This is the road we used to take whenever we were visiting my grandma in Wisconsin. No, wait, my uh, my aunt and uncle, excuse me. But yeah, look, wait, 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 stop that shit. Here, let me do this. Whoops, wrong button. Yeah. This is the bridge we used to take whenever we were visiting my aunt and uncle in um, over in Wisconsin. I forget the exact city where the exact city where they lived. They actually lived on a farm. Some probably some low population or unincorporated town. But yeah, this is the bridge we used to take. And uh, this bridge, it. I think back in the back in the 80s this it was never a fully paved road it was actually one big metal grill is what it was my how times have changed oh at least the at least the uh, the grain belt billboards still up there nice to see that some things haven't changed Definitely a blast from the past there. So, but yeah, anyway, getting back to getting back to the rugby match, it's, it, you know, you shouldn't, or I, I probably need to explain too that, uh, unlike American football, all the calls that uh, rugby referees make are basically done in real time. So they're having to make constant judgment calls because Unlike football and rugby, the game's constantly going. It's constantly moving. So referees often have, they're often forced to improvise. They're, they're kind of like hockey. They're kind of like the uh, the referees and the referee and linesmen in uh, hockey. I mean, the, the hockey's constantly going in real time. So the, the, opposite, the referees in there have to make constant judgment calls on the spur of the moment. Rugby's that same way. So... So players are going to have to learn to deal with a, a few blown calls here and there because the refs are having to work on the spur of the moment. So again, it isn't it isn't like American football where everybody gets in position for the next play. The play executes, which typically in the last probably around 5-10 seconds, and that's it. And then everybody on those football teams have a have a set you know have a set role. They all do exactly the same thing, and you know that kind of thing. It's not, not as fluid as rugby. So, yeah. So again, rugby referees up. They're not. All, they're not gonna. Their calls aren't gonna be a hundred, hundred percent accurate, hundred percent of the time. So. so anyway. Oh, and uh, I forgot to say too. Um. Um, Ireland, they're they're actually kicking uh, New Zealand's ass right now. I think it was like 24 to 10 or something like that. Usually, uh, New Zealand are basically one of the greatest uh, rugby teams ever. So that's pretty rare. You know, I think uh, Ireland, um, I think they're like they're like mid to upper tier uh, as far as uh, as far as the world of rugby goes. So yeah, pretty surprising. So. Uh, but anyway, um, that's gonna do it for me, everybody. Yeah, I've, I've said all the things that I wanted to say, and I might actually consider, I might actually consider doing this in the future, then. 
because like I said, I didn't think I was going to be using any visuals at all. Except maybe at the start or something. So, But anyway, once again, I'm um, just going to go ahead and call it good. Um, I pretty much said everything I wanted to say today. So, And, um, and this is going to be, and this is, um, this is my last cast for the week. I was off tonight, so they didn't, they didn't call me in or anything. So, so Thursday and Friday will be my work nights. And so you won't be hearing from me again until Sunday morning. So, but until then, thanks again for dropping by everybody and see you all next time. Bye for now.